Hi, I'm Lisa Curcio, and I would love to welcome you here to Lisa's Stamp Studio. Tonight, I have the best gatefold card idea for you, and it uses designer series paper. I'm going to demonstrate it for you, but I've got several other samples to share with you, and I've got lots of great tips to share along the way. Now, as always, I am here live with you right now in the chat. I would love for you to log into your YouTube account for the special premiere and chat with me live. Also with me is my daughter, Gina curcio Holly. She's the sales and marketing director here at Lisa's Stamp Studio, and you've probably seen her in a lot of my videos. She's very talented stamper, and she's here to answer your questions and provide links with you, and she's here with me. We hope that you'll log in to chat with us live, and if you're watching the replay, we would love to read your comments. We come back and we read every single one. You're not gonna wanna miss tonight's free project sheet. That's going to be linked down in the video description for you below when tonight's premiere is all over. It's going to include a template tonight so that you can recreate this gatefold card at home with ease. And if you love fun folds as much as I do, you're going to want to know all about this. The online stamping retreat is in just a few weeks and we would love to have you register. Registration is open now, so head over to OnlineStampingRetreat.com and get all the information there. And the best part is it doesn't matter what country you live in. This event will be on Saturday, February 10th here in the USA and of course in Canada and February 11th in other countries. You're going to love this full day online virtual event, which means you can be in your PJs, enjoy 48 giveaways. We're going to have six live demonstrations throughout the entire day. You're going to have lifetime access to everything. I have partnered with Kylie Bertucci, who is the number one Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Australia, and her immensely talented husband, Bruno. Gina and I are going to demonstrate live together and, of course, individually, as well as Kylie and Bruno. You're not going to want to miss all the fun folds we have to share with you. And if you love merchandise, you're going to love that adorable bee pin. Gina designed this pin and it's part of our merchandise for this online stamping retreat for 2024. This is, of course, session one for this year, and we hope that you'll join us for the other ones as well. But you're not going to want to miss this one. The projects are over the top. Again, onlinestampingretreat.com. All right, we're ready. Let's go ahead and let's get started. We're going to start with a piece of designer series paper for the card base. This measures five and a half by 12. We're going to use the paper trimmer to do some scoring and some cutting. Now, the paper trimmer with Stampin' Up! is my absolute favorite because it's super easy to use. The grid lines are all protected by a clear surface that's actually embedded and sealed into here. You don't have to worry about those rubbing off. They include both the scoring and the cutting blade. They stay on the clear track and they navigate up and down out of the way. There's a ledge here at the top as well as the bottom that's going to keep the cardstock nice and straight. And you'll see some other great features. The best advice I have for you is if your designer series paper has a direction, please keep that in mind and be very cognizant of that. Now, before we get started on that gorgeous paper, I want to show you where that comes from. Right now, Stampin' Up! is in the middle of their large annual sale called Celebration. The products in this brochure are absolutely free with a $50 order. Now, if you're like me and you have a really big wish list, the good news is, is there are products in the $100 category as well. And if you think you want the discount on all those amazing Stampin' Up! products, there's an incredible join feature right now where you can get products for free or increase the products inside the custom starter kit. All this information can be found on my website under join. This designer series paper is part of Celebration, which means it's free. Now I've pulled it out so you can see it. And unfortunately, this is the only piece I have left of this one, which is the one that we're using. So you've already seen that. And you can tell the papers are double sided. Why? Just what I've just shown you there. So we've got hearts in different sizes. And I love those. Great for wedding cards, anniversaries. But the best part is the double sided because these gorgeous foils can be used all year round. While some of these have very simple patterns that can even be used on masculine cards, there are others that have florals and some very random backgrounds. This designer series paper, like I said, is free right now during the sale for every $50 product purchased before shipping and tax. And this is good until February 29th. I'm going to do my marking and cutting on this so that you can actually see it a lot easier than this side. So keep in mind, once again, the direction of the pattern. So we're going to start by scoring. So the first score line is going to be at two inches. So I have a long edge here across the top. 
I'm going to line it up at two inches. I'm using that ledge to my benefit. And with that light blade, we are going to score. We are going to move over now to four inches and we're going to do the exact same thing. Make sure your paper is nice and straight and we are going to score. Now we need to move over to eight inches and that's where this amazing extendable arm comes in and that's great for these bigger projects or if you are a scrapbooker. So again, I'll use that ledge at the top, line it up at eight inches and we are going to score. And the last one now is going to be at 10 inches. So I'm gonna move that over one more time, lining it up, making sure it's nice and straight, and then we are going to score. I'm gonna collapse that arm back in, and I'm gonna turn this, but I'm gonna bring in my pencil because I think it's gonna be a little bit easier for you to see. I know that you can't see those score lines on camera, so I'm gonna very lightly come inside of here with my pencil on those crease lines so that you'll be able to see the markings. We are now gonna turn it so the five and a half inch is cross here at the top. We are gonna open this up and we are going to measure at two and three quarters inches. And this is why I love this trimmer because not only can we cut and score, but we can also measure with it. So I'm gonna take this left end and line it up at two and three quarters of an inch. Again, making it straight here across the top. And watch what we're gonna do. We're gonna use that pencil and we're gonna make a line right inside that track. We're also going to do another one here at the bottom, which I know it's going to be really hard for you to see. So I'm going to turn that trimmer sideways. I'm going to make another one here at the bottom of your screen. I get a lot of comments about this pencil because it is amazing. The lead is very, very soft and the eraser is a champ. I have it linked for you on my website since it's not a Stampin' Up! product. Under a special section under Shop Craft Room Favorites. Scroll through there. There's a ton of great things for you. Now that we have those markings made, I'm gonna pull this out so you can see it. So we've got one here at the top and one here at the side. With the direction going the right way, that's very, very important, we're gonna do some cutting. The other thing I wanna make you cognizant about is the side that you want to be most predominant on the front of the card needs to be faced down. And that will make sense more in a minute. So if this is your first time making this project, try scrap paper first and then also watch the video first as you create from home. That clear track is a champ because we're gonna be able to line up those pencil marks right inside that black strip area here, which is where the blade is going to fall. So I'm looking here at the top and here at the bottom to make sure that they are aligned as good as possible. Once I'm happy with that, I'm gonna bring that dark blade up, which is for cutting. I'm gonna close that clear track and I'll look at it one more time and then we are going to slice. Don't throw this away. We're gonna end up using that. Now we're gonna come over here to this side and we're gonna do the exact same thing. So once again, I'm looking to line these up, the points at the top and the bottom of that dark track. Once I'm happy with it, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna close that door and then we are going to slice. And once again, we're going to save that. Now we talked about that pencil and now is a great time to show you. So we're gonna come in here and we're gonna erase those pencil marks so that they're not gonna be obtrusive on our card. I'm gonna erase them on each side. Now that those pencil marks are erased, it's now a matter of folding. We're gonna start on the right side. So this first crease line here is going to be what we call a mountain fold, which means it's going to come to a peak. This next score line is going to be a valley fold. Do you see why now you want the right side facing down? Because it's gonna be predominant here on the front in just a moment. Once you have that aligned on that score line, I want you to take your bone folder and I want you to reinforce those score lines. You want a fun fold to lay nice. We're gonna do the exact same thing on this side. So this is going to come up, there's your mountain fold now on the left, and then we're gonna crease in for the valley fold here on the right. And I'm just gonna go over that. Foil paper, sometimes you have to make sure that you crease carefully because it's a little bit thicker because of the foil. And then once again, we'll go over that with the bone folder. Now that we have this portion finished, remember those pieces that we saved? We're going to need those. I'm gonna bring in my silicone craft sheet and my glue press. I've gotten tons of comments on this and so many of you have purchased it because this is a game changer. I'm almost starting to be a glue girl. I fill the empty bottle that comes with the press with the multi-purpose liquid glue sold in my online store. The glue bottle slips down inside of here and it's literally a small trigger for the glue to come out. The great thing I love about this is you can see with just a simple pump, you can get the gun started and look how tiny I can make these, which makes this fantastic for pieces of paper just like this one. Now, before you get started, I want you to get an idea on placement because these are gonna actually go in the corners 
of the bottom right and bottom left. So I'm going to flip this over to what will be my wrong side. You can see by the size of my hand, and my hands are small, that this is a very small press. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to work near those outside edges, not too close because you don't want the glue to run over the sides. But here's the other reason why I love it. It has a stand. There's a stopper at the bottom of that stand, which is going to ensure that the tip doesn't get clogged while you're using it. I'm aligning the bottom edge here along to the bottom. Let me show you how great this stopper is. You're going to see the red plunger here at the bottom. What happens is the needle tip comes all the way to there, creating almost an airtight seal, which means the needle tip is not going to get clogged. The other great thing I love about this is this really hardy acrylic lid. You'll notice that there's a needle point inside the cap that goes inside of here to store it. I have this linked for you on my website in my craft room favorites as well. This is made by My Sweet Petunia. It's not a Stampin' Up! product. You are going to love it as much as I do. One time buy, it's going to be a game changer. I'm going to open up now this other side. I'm going to bring in my silicone craft sheet and we're going to work on this angle. So again, we're going to make sure that we're flipped it over to have the additional pattern that's going to be seen here on this opposite corner. So again, I'll turn that upside down and then we're going to add glue here. When we're all finished with this, you're going to see how this creates a real fun illusion of a break in the paper. And then again, this time with a contrasting color underneath, it's going to make it a lot easier for me to see where those edges are so that I can align this up as good as possible. The multi-purpose liquid glue dries very, very quickly and it's very, very strong. This will be the inside base of the card. So these are going to fold close like a gatefold but the whole card is constructed of designer series paper. Now, if you're worried about stability, I've got some great ideas for you, as well as showing you some other samples. Now let's work on how the focal point works for this opening. I die cut a beautiful scallop square from basic white cardstock, and I use those dies from the Scalloped Contours dies set, also one of my favorites here. Love cascading sizes, and I love that fun scallop trim. It really creates a lot of elegance to your cards. There is a coordinating stamp set to this. You'll be able to find this in the annual catalog as well as that new mini catalog, which includes lots more products besides the annual. If you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you are interested in receiving those publications, ways to obtain your copies of these catalogs over on my website at lisastampstudio.com under shop and catalogs. I'm going to start by doing some heat embossing, which I thought would play up some of that gold that's going to be on those small panels, as well as the inside of the card. And the stamp set I'm using this evening is called Cake Fancy. Now, it may or may not have caught your attention because of those really fun, distinctive images, which means they're meant to look more real than they are stamped. Now, this is in that brand new mini catalog I just showed you. It's here on page 30, and there's some really cute samples, but there's lots of fun things you can do with it. And I decided, well, a birthday card is really intuitive. I want to do something a bit different. Since we're going to be doing some heat embossing, we're going to need our Versamark ink pad. And we want to prepare our work surface. Whenever you're heat embossing, take the extra second and use the embossing buddy. You'll find this bag inside the Embossing Editions Toolkit. Not only will it include this, it'll include a great tidy tray and reversible tweezers, which are all assets in heat embossing. The next thing you're going to want nearby is your embossing powder. And I put mine in these snappable containers. We have those linked for you on my website under Shop Craft Room Favorites as well. I love this because you don't have to worry about it dropping and losing all that amazing embossing powder. There's about four or five bottles of embossing powder in here. I like it nice and thick and I do a ton of heat embossing. Now that we've got our paper prepped, all we have to do is use our Versamark ink now and the image we're going to want to use. And in this case, I am going to be using the cake stand. Now Versamark ink is sticky and it's intended to be because it's intended to be used for embossing powder. Although it does leave a watermark image on top of colored cardstock too. So that's a great use for it to be planed up for in just tone on tone backgrounds. Lots of firm, even pressure. I'm going to remove that. I am going to close that because we don't want embossing powder in there. And you're going to immediately want to cover that with embossing powder. So it's going to stick to that moist ink. Here come those valuable reverse tweezers. That's going to help hold my paper. And then I'm going to bring in my heat tool. Now the Stampin' Up! heat tool is my favorite. It has two settings. There's a one and a two. There are vents here on one side. So very, very important. You don't want to cover that up with your hand while you're using it. Just like a blow dryer. You don't want to overheat it. 
It has a collapsible stand, which is fantastic for storage. There is an encased tip here. Now this encased tip is super great because as this gun heats up, it's going to help retain the heat and it's gonna keep it warm so that if you do multiples of an image, it's gonna go even faster than the first one you created. Now we're gonna go ahead and turn the heat gut on. My best recommendation about heat embossing is to start in one area. You want to make sure that you're not overheating the paper, but you want the gun to create heat intensity in one area. As the paper heats and the gun gets hotter, it's going to conduct the heat where that powder is going to turn into a beautiful foily finish. You see it starting to turn? And now once it starts to turn, I'm going to move my way across that paper so that the remaining powder is going to turn to a beautiful embossed foil image. It's just like magic. Just like I said before, you want to make sure that you don't overheat it. If you do, it won't look raised in foil. It will look scorched and embedded. Now you've been crafting any amount of time. You know that sometimes that stray embossing powder stays on your work surface and it feels gritty. And you don't want that to transfer to an ink pad, of course. So the best thing to do on cleaning up is one of two things. Get yourself a sticky roller and run it right over your work surface. Those sticky rollers will pick up the smallest of things. If you don't have one of those, take a Swiffer cloth and use that. I actually cut this one in half and that static will help pick up all those little loose pieces to keep your work surface nice and clean. We're gonna use the Crumb Cake ink pad and we are going to include a piece here that's going to represent the cake. Now from the front, it's gonna be very, very difficult to see the direction of the image. So I wanna give you a tip. Bring in some scrap grid paper. The grid papers are sold on my website. They're much larger, I just cut them up for the video. Stamp it. You wanna make sure that the largest gradient area of color is on the left, and that'll make more sense in just a minute. So we're gonna go ahead and ink that up, and then we're gonna stamp that here. Photopolymer makes it easy for you to navigate. Lots of firm, even pressure. You're gonna to notice too here now how it's darker on this side and lighter on the other. If you were to create the other slice for this piece of cake here in the stamp set that includes the top, You'll notice that the gradation is very similar, so you want to make sure they're going in the same direction. I'm going to move over to the Real Red ink pad, and of course this is the beauty of the Stampin' Up! products is the color coordination. So this red is the same red that's in that designer series paper. From that stamp set, I've pulled out this adorable berry image, and I'm going to go ahead and stamp that first one right here, and then I'm going to ink it up again, and this time I'm going to slightly overlap and stamp it on this side. Now just before you joined me, I went ahead and I created a greeting. Now the greeting here is from a different stamp set because I love to mix and match sentiments from other stamp sets to work with my Stampin' Up! products. A lot of times you'll find the fonts are very similar if not identical in different stamp sets which allows you to mix and match. So for this one I did Let's Celebrate, it's your anniversary because I always need anniversary cards and don't seem to have enough. Let's go ahead and let's flip that banner upside down and we're going to use our dimensionals across the back side. Now this is a little bit longer than my scallop rectangle. So I'm gonna to gravitate towards the center first and I'm not gonna put them too close to the outside. I wanna make sure that they are well balanced for mailing and then we'll remove that paper backing. Now if you're wondering how I created those banner tips, really, really simple, just with my scissors. The best tip I can give you about creating banner tips is to always create the slit in the center first and then cut up from each end. The Banner's Pick-A-Punch is one of my favorites. However, I made this one just a little bit narrower, so it was under the dimensions for the punch, but that's another fantastic option. Coming back here to the card base, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you hold those flaps flat. This should look almost like perfect points on both sides, which is where those extra pieces that we cut off from here work here to give that triangular vision. Now, you'll see on my other samples that we're gonna use other shapes. This is going to have to get adhered but very important that you don't adhere it to one side. In my case, it's going to be on the right side. So I am looking here and I'm visually looking that I need to keep my dimensionals here towards what will be the opposite side, which will be the left side when I flip this over. So I'm gonna put one here, one here, and I'm gonna add another one here. And I'm also gonna add another here in the center just to kind of give this some balance. I'm also going to recommend that you put your fingers there before you go to adhere it because it's really important that you don't have any dimensional showing. So let's go ahead and let's remove those paper backings. Another great use for my take your pick tool. My arthritic fingers don't like pinching those off. So this paper piercing tool attachment will release those. 
There's a putty tip here that's going to pick up small pieces of cardstock as well as embellishments and sequins. Again, keeping my fingers where I know the adhesive for the dimensionals is, I am now looking to align this card. So I'm looking here and here to try to keep it within the perimeters of the card base. Once I'm happy with it, we're going to go ahead and we're going to press that in place. And then we are going to check. You should see that there's balance here to keep this from flapping and you want to make sure that there's no dimensionals visible here. Now I want to show you something. It's sticking a little bit here, which means that one of my dimensionals might be sticking out a little bit. So let me show you another great use for this tool. This dials out and I can flip this around. So this is multifunctional and there's a spatula on this end. So I've just locked it in place and I'm going to take this and I'm just going to tuck that extra dimensional behind here so that it's not going to be sticky or it's going to be visible. Now I'm assured that that's not going to stick in place. To give the card base stability, we're going to need to add an inside piece. And I thought, let's play up that real red cardstock because that's going to really create continuity to the front banner. But it's going to need some area for you to sign or write. Now, I did do this ahead of time, but I used stamps from the exact same stamp set, Cake Fancy. So the words here are all separate, which means you can build custom phrases. So I stamped the Enjoy, and then I stamped the Special Day. I used the Heart here and then I just realized, you know what else I forgot? I wanted to add the heart in one more place. I'm going to push that off to the side. Let's bring in that heart image and the flirty flamingo ink. I've got my ink pad here at the top of your camera. I'm going to ink up that small heart. I want to add them here to the cake. So I'm going to add one here and I'm going to add another one here. And I think having them side by side will add a little credence to this anniversary card. I have my silicone craft sheet here and let's go ahead and put these two pieces together. I'm going to switch over to adhesive for this. This is my Stampin' Seal Plus. It is immensely strong. I'm not sure you can see this on camera, but it comes out in small tabs, which means if you get a little excited at the end, you can roll it back on top of itself. Because it's very, very strong, it's not repositionable. So if you are more comfortable with glue, you are going to love that precision glue press. So I'm looking to keep a nice, simple border all the way around. And then once I'm happy with that, we'll go ahead and tack that in place. We're going to flip that over and we're going to add a little bit more adhesive here to the back of those layers. This now is going to come here to the center of the card. I'm going to fold this back just to make it easier for you to see. Do you see the creases here and here? You want to stay within that perimeter. I have all the cutting and scoring dimensions along with a template for you inside today's project sheet and that's completely free. I'm bringing in the Neutrals Adhesive Backed Sequins. And I love these because I love the merit of colors. They're going to be really varied for your projects. Kind of like a brassy gold, a whitish silver. And we have variations of copper here. So a little bit darker and a little bit lighter. I'm going to start with one of the larger sequins. They have glue dots already on the back. And I want to pull your eye down a little bit when you're looking at the cards. I'm going to place one here. Then I'll take a smaller one. And this time I'm going to work within the perimeters of the white. Now, no two cards are the same. The one inside your project sheet, you'll see my banner is a little bit higher. So I put one here. I can put another one up here. I like to make sure that I use odd numbers to gravitate the eye. So you can put this one here or you can work them diagonally. It's completely up to you. But let's go ahead and let's work this one up here just so that we can pull our eye up and down. That triangle formation is always going to work well. Once you're finished, give those a good push, and there you go. You have a very simple and beautiful gatefold card using designer series paper. But wait till you see these other cards. This next one uses a myriad of products. As a matter of fact, this is a hybrid bundle. So we have the Enduring Beauty stamp set, large floral image with some assorted greetings. It has coordinating dies, but guess what? The hybrid also includes these beautiful decorative masks better known as stencils. Each of them is numbered one through five here at the top. And I want to show you the card and how that hybrid actually worked. Here is the card. Isn't this stunning? The designer series paper on here is called Softly Stipple. Look at it. Gorgeous. And that's also a free celebration designer series paper option for you. The stencils did all the work on coloring this. So if you're thinking, egads, I don't want to do all that coloring. The stencils are going to take care of it for you. Starting with stencil number one, once you stamp your image, check for the small flower here. That's going to give you an indication of placement. So what I like to do is I like to line it up first 
And then I create my notch on my scratch paper because that's going to make it easier to mirror them. And then you're just going to blend with your blending brush. Then you're going to move over to stencil number two, and you're going to do the exact same thing for your leaves. Nice and simple, right? And then number three for your detailed colors. Number four is going to give you those detailed leaves. And then number five, which I didn't use on this card, but you can add some umped color or complementary colors to the center of your flowers. Now, I opted because of the shape of my card to mount the image, quote, upside down. So I had a narrow piece here at the bottom. And again, that beautiful double-sided designer series paper does all the work. I added in some glossy dots assortments, which I did do some little bit of stamping here on the inside. And again, that is from the Enduring Beauty stamp set. You'll find those images here. Really beautiful and really classy. And the one great thing I love about this, this is going to make an anything card. So it's birthday, thinking of you, get well, sympathy, you name it, and it's got you covered. Let me show you this next one. I love whimsical stamps, and this one totally caught my eye because not too many of us use an old-fashioned phone anymore, but I just thought the message was simple and it could be used for lots of reasons. And let me show you the card I created. This is called Let's Chat. That's the name of the stamp set. And I use the Rock and Roll Designer Series paper. That paper has beautiful black and white impressions on both sides. You can mix and match for all kinds of things. I die cut a stitch circle here from the Stylish Shapes dies. I just use some elegant trim in the silver, stamp my greening inside my dial. And again, the double-sided papers here do all the work. Added a small embellishment there at the bottom of the hay, and then added a few here on my card base. You can see how simple this fun fold is, but you could also see the impact from the designer series paper patterns. Now, as always, I love to know your favorite. Do me a favor, pop down right now in the comments and let me know which one you favor and why. Your feedback is always so important for me as I design and move forward with new projects for you. Another great benefit here at Lisa's Stamp Studio are Stamp Studio memberships. And if you're not sure what it is, it's $5 a month, which is gonna get you an exclusive tutorial coming right to your inbox every single Monday. It doesn't matter what country you live in, we would love to have you join us. And maybe level two is more your speed because once a month it includes a fun fold design. I also give you a discount for my PDF tutorial library and I do giveaways every month. All the information is over on my website at lisastampstudio.com. Memberships, check it out. I know we talked about this a little bit, but right now it's Stampin' Up's largest sale of the year. For every $50 increment that you spend, you're going to be able to choose something for free right now from the sale brochure, and it's abundant. And if you've got a big wish list like I do, and maybe your order is at $100 or even $150, there are products to choose from in a higher category of $100 and more. So make sure you keep an eye on those ordering totals. I want you to scoop up as much free product as you possibly can. And if you've ever thought of joining the Stampin' Up! family, now is a fantastic time. I would love to have you join my stamping team. There's a fantastic join bonus in a custom starter kit. You can find all of that information over on my website under join. I am so thankful that you were here with me tonight. Thank you so much for joining me, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great evening, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>